Welcome to another episode of the Heavy Metal Gamer Show, and this time I want to review a Bobo's Big Adventure. Now, if you remember, I did a review of a game called Bionic Chainsaw Pogo Gorilla that was created by iMockery. Well, I also mentioned in that review that they made another game, and that game is a Bobo's Big Adventure. I remember when this game first hit the internet. I spent hours and hours playing this game. And the funny thing is, the game is not easy. It has that old school difficulty vibe. Now, it's not insane easy like Ghosts and Goblins or anything like that, but the game can be tough as hell. A Bobo's Big Adventure was developed by iMockery founder Roger Barr, and the game was released in 2012. It is a freeware game that you can find on the internet, on a few Flash game websites, and even its very own website, which I'll put in the description box below. A Bobo's Big Adventure is a game that is almost like a parody to retro games, or should I say paying homage or tribute. You play as a Bobo, who is normally a bad guy in the Double Dragon franchise, and you will travel through different NES games to save your son, a Boboy. Now, the way a Boboy is captured is almost in the vein of the intro to Double Dragon. This sets a Bobo off in a rage of anger and revenge on getting his son back. There are nine stages you will go through, and each level is to a classic NES game. You will see numerous character sprites, level themes, music and sound effects from games like Double Dragon, Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Kung Fu, Radical Ninja, Donkey Kong, Dig Dug, Balloon Fight, Castlevania, Mega Man, Dr. Mario, Contra, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ninja Gaiden, Punch-Out, Kirby's Adventure, and more. Each level in this game will have its own set of rules. Pretty much the game changes from a beat-em-up to a platformer to an RPG action-adventure style game to a wrestling game and even a boxing game. I think that is pretty damn cool. One thing about Abobo's Big Adventure, the game is violent, but not like realistic violence or anything like that. More like 8-bit violence, but there is some blood and gore throughout the game, which is pretty funny because back in the day, you didn't see a ton of NES games or games in 8-bit that had a ton of blood and gore, at least on the NES. You've seen some, but not to this degree. I still think it's great. This game is not for little kids, of course, so if you're a parent and you don't want your kids to play this, I totally understand. Although it'd be kind of funny if your kid is playing like Kirby's Adventure at home or some game like that and all of a sudden they see this game and see Kirby get killed or a character from a game they know just get slaughtered and eaten or whatever. That'd be kind of funny. The graphics for Abobo's Big Adventure are damn good. It has that nice, old-school, 8-bit NES feel to it. The level designs are nice and there's no glitching, which in some of the NES games mentioned, there are some glitching in the originals. The character sprites are perfect, and look how they should. There was no half-assed work done here. Everything is in perfect detail. I have no complaints at all. And I'm sure somebody out there is saying, Oh, come on, it's just 8-bit graphics. Nobody cares about caveman games. Go back to your Call of Duty, your bland and boring, realistic first-person shooters then. The music and sound effects are amazing. First of all, the music is the same from the original games. And it's not some half-assed thrown-together music either. It seems that when the game was made, they wanted everything to be as close as they can. One cool feature in a Bobo's Big Adventure is the Rage Meter. When the Rage Meter is full, you can use it to go on a rampage on your enemies or the bosses you will be fighting in the game. And let me just say this, the boss battles for the most part are not easy, especially later on through the game. There'll be a few bosses, especially near the end, that it'll probably take you five or six times to beat. Unless you're really good, then you can probably beat it in one shot. But like somebody like myself, who is not the best at some games, when you beat that boss, or you beat through that level that's a bit tough, it's almost like a big sigh of relief. It's really awesome. The controls for Abobo's Big Adventure are very good, and they respond very well. Using a keyboard is easy, moving around and all of that is very easy for a Flash game. I am really impressed by the controls. Kind of like Bionic Chainsaw Pogo Gorilla, everything seems to work just perfectly. And it's funny because I have played some Flash games out there that the controls are just horrible or a bit slow at responding. Overall, a Bobo's Big Adventure is a badass game, and as far as I am concerned, it's as good as any console game out there. 
The game is fun, it has great humor, and really, I have little to almost no complaints about it. Now, I'm not saying the game is a perfect 10 or anything like that, but it's pretty damn close. I guess one of my only complaints would be that I wish the game was longer. Maybe 15 to 20 levels. Also, this game shows that iMockery cares a lot about their games. If you look at my review of Bionic Chainsaw Pogo Gorilla, I said that should have been game of the year as well. If iMockery keeps making video games like this, either Flash games or moving into the indie scene for releasing on PC and consoles, they are going to kick some major ass. I seriously hope they make that move. If you have never played a Bobo's Big Adventure, I will put the link in the description box below to where you can play it for free. And also you can find the game on a few other websites as well. If you are into classic retro gaming and you are into Flash games, this game is almost a perfect combination. You will enjoy it because it kicks ass. Sadly, there is no sequel to a Bobo's Big Adventure, but hopefully later on down the line, there is of some sort. Well, that is it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.